Kevin here again, and welcome to another episode of the Professionally Evil Fundamentals. Short, just a few minutes worth of information about a specific thing, whether it's how to set up a proxy or how to use Burp. And so in this one, we're actually going to talk about Burp Suite. And so we're going to click around with it and show you some of the basics on how it functions. So like with everything else, we're gonna click on applications, go to Samurai WTF and launch Burp Suite from there. We're gonna give it a second while it launches. Or not. So, we're gonna launch it here. As you can see, I'm using the professional version of Burp. Uh, Samurai ships with the community edition, but for these videos, we're gonna use the professional version. For the vast majority of the things we're gonna show you, there are no differences. When there is a difference, we'll call it out and say this is a function of the professional version, not the community edition. But for learning and practicing, uh, the Community Edition is great for that. It works fine. I just, as a professional penetration tester, I use the professional version. So you're gonna be greeted with the initial screen, which is where you create a project. Uh, the professional version has some more features here. We're gonna click Next. We're just gonna use the defaults and we're gonna start Burp. And it starts up. Now at this point, we are greeted with the main dashboard within Burp. Now, the professional version has an automatic scanner, so the dashboard is really designed around all of that. Um, community version doesn't use it. As a professional pen tester, I don't use the active scanner either, so not very useful uh, for me. Now. One of the very first things we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the proxy tab and you'll notice that intercept is on by default. <coughs> this is not the way we want it to be because we want our browser, when it's configured to proxy through Burp, to flow freely to the server and back without being intercepted. We really want Burp just to capture the information. So we're gonna turn intercept off by simply clicking that. All of Burp is tabs. You're gonna see that you have the main tabs across the top, right? The target, the proxy, repeater, things like that. And then as you select a tab, you'll have a set of sub tabs underneath. For example, with the proxy tab, we have the HTTP history. If you've actually looked at any of our other stuff with Burp, you'll know that we spend a lot of time in the HTTP history tab. Another thing to look at is extender. Uh, extender is where you can add extensions that are available. You have the B app store or the Burp app store that you can get some, and there are APIs and you can build your own. For example, our Jason Gillum has released a series of plugins that are actually kind of cool. Uh, one of them is CO2, and so you just go through the list, and you'll notice some of them say Pro Extension. Those require the professional version, makes sense. CO2 does not. So I'm gonna come in here, come down to the bottom, and click Install, and it's installed in that. You'll notice a new tab appeared, right? We can also come in here, uh, to Paramalyzer, which is another extension Jason writ wrote. Uh, and we're gonna say install for that as well. Now, because I'm using the professional version, I'm gonna add this uh, retire.js. Uh, what it does is it, as you browse a website, it passively looks at the client side code that is loaded to tell you whether it has known vulnerabilities. For example, you're using an old version of jQuery or uh, Bootstrap or something. So I'm gonna install that. Now, the rest of Burp comes through here, right? You can look at the target tab and, and see uh, as you browse, this will populate 
with the web pages. If you watch our targets uh, episode, we'll show uh, interacting directly with an application. You'll also notice that there's two columns over here, one that says content and one that says issues. The issues are coming from that scanner that's built into Burp. You're able to right click on either of these columns, click view and switch that to the tab. So we're going even further, right? You have tabs upon tabs upon tabs. I prefer this form. If you're using the community edition, the issues aren't necessary to see because they don't work in the community edition. Um, so just seeing the contents of the site. So when you click a domain or site over here, you'll get a list of all the pages that show for that. Um, and then as you click them, you'll see the request and the response below. So you can actually look at everything that's happening. Of course, you also have things like your options, right? Uh, so you've got connections, if you want to do authentication, if you have any upstream proxy servers. This is something that we actually use quite often. Um, if we are working with a, a internal application, but we're doing it remotely, we actually run a proxy server, kind of, uh, on our SIAMs, the Secure Ideas Attack Machines. You can also set up a SOX proxy, what have you, right? Now, if we go back over to the proxy tab, I also want to show you this options. This is a common mistake that happens. If you come over here to proxy and then options, see how it tells you 127.0.0.1 colon 8080? In some of our other episodes, we've mentioned that Burp listens by default on 8080. And you'll notice that there's a checkbox under running. Sometimes people will have a problem. Maybe when you launched Burp, uh, there's another process still hanging around. Or in Samurai, a lot of people will launch Burp and Zap. Both of them listen on 8080. And so the second one to start won't function. So if you had Zap running because you were trying some stuff out and then you launched Burp, close Zap, Burp's interception or its proxy certain listener will not be running and so all you have to do is come here and click the checkbox and it will start running so this is a quick overview of burp i do think that you should explore it deeper and as we go through various other fundamental videos we dig into maybe some of the vulnerabilities we dig into some of the specific techniques like fuzzing and, and what have you we'll dig further into this. We also will be working on a Zap video. So if you have any questions, reach out to us via Slack at the Professionally Evil Workspace. Of course, you can get the invite to that at professionallyevil.com or feel free to email us at training at securideas.com. Thank you very much.